"'Twas the night before irrigation and all through the yard. The flags are all waving, the plans have been marked. The stripes are on point to impress those installers, for after tomorrow, the grass will always have water." Alright, today is the day. Just about to get started here. They're kind of getting their stuff put together and just kind of getting organized. So I'm going to take you along for this whole process today, kind of start to finish how the whole thing works, and hopefully you'll learn something just like I will. I, that's what I usually tell people, kind of that 10 to 12 inch range. Okay. Yeah, that's that's typical right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, the offset pole will make sense when you see how the saddle works. Mm -hmm. You set the saddle off to the side so then we can run the funny pipe to the head and get enough funny pipe in there. Yep. I want to show you a quick example of our Iowa soil here and what we got going on. So here's what we got going on so far. The trenches are going in really well. It's kind of folding back down. Our soil is really wet. We had more rain last night. We had rain this week, probably an inch and a half, maybe a little more. So I was happy about that, but I didn't think too much about the weight of the actual machine and the fact that we've got kind of tires on there that are made for a bunch of traction because this is a machine they got to use in so many different situations. So I didn't think about that too much. We'll see how that goes back, but there's definitely some areas that I'm going to have to do quite a bit of leveling work just because of the indents that were created with the actual weight of the machine. I was trying to get these like kind of as level yeah. as you can. Yeah. They walk, they gotta be always to the level from the concrete or like the sidewalk over there, you know? Yeah. I didn't do a whole lot of talking in front of the camera during the process. I was just trying to kind of capture everything and pay attention to what was going on. So I got 
most of the video stuff done and I figured that we would talk about it kind of the process that went on yesterday here and then I'll overlay some of that stuff on here. So basically what happened with the system in general is of course came out and designed it and then after that you will get a little map like this or some kind of map of your whole property and where all the heads are gonna go, where all the zones go, where the water goes, everything. So that was kind of the process for that. Then I had to have actual piping put in in my basement and then run out to the edge of the house actually out back here because I did not have that previously without having an irrigation system. There was no plumbing there to do that. So I had to have that put in. This is the one inch line coming from the basement. So then this is the backflow preventer right here. And then this is our main water line from this one, from the house going down to our main water line that goes and feeds the whole system. So that then comes out a little ways into the backyard here and we've got a T line. So this is where they ran PVC pipe both ways here. So ran it over here to go feed that zone over there. Then ran it right through here to feed these three zones over here. So th this is our valve box that goes for this side zone over here. So I have that side yard area and the little strip out by the street all in one zone. I usually always kind of treat that as one area so I figured I would leave it all as one thing and not kind of separate it out. Then over here on this side, of course, we have the other three zones, as I mentioned. We've got one for just this little section here by the fence and about to the edge of the house. We've got then one for this whole front yard area. Right out here for this parking strip area, I decided to split this into its own zone. The reason being is I had some renovation planned for this area. It has not had any renovation compared to the front. It needs leveling and it needs kind of some more uniform grass in there so I was planning that this season so I thought hey if I want to be able to run water on this you know light doses every once in a while compared to having it run with the front I decided to split this off into its own thing. So the first thing that they do is started trenching in the lines and as I mentioned yesterday that the grass was a little bit wetter than I had hoped it would be. I didn't think it would be too much of an issue. It wasn't saturated or soaked. When you were walking around on it you didn't feel it under your feet or anything like that. But it was soft enough and I have pretty soft soil just from the work that I've done on it over the years here. Although most of my sprinklers were going to be on the perimeter, I was kind of thinking in my head that it was just going to stay around the outside but I forgot about pulling all the zones and getting the machine into tight spaces and all that stuff. So that is what did the majority of the damage. What I did last night right away was I watered it pretty heavily and then I broke some lawn rules. I took my lawn roller out. It's about probably 250 pounds maybe with water in it. And I rolled some of the worst areas where there were some mounds from the tires and all that. But didn't really do a whole lot to fix that. It's not enough weight. Not really a big deal there. If you don't have one, I wouldn't probably go to the expense of renting one and trying it. It didn't do a whole lot. I got the Hunter HydroWise controller right now, and that's Wi-Fi enabled, which means I can walk around with my phone and use an app and turn on different zones, turn them off. So if I want to adjust any coverage, I can kind of do it easily without going back and forth to the controller. I can be anywhere and start them, stop them, whatever happens. So that's a really nice feature and one that I for sure wanted was to be able to control it from my phone, be working out in the yard, turn it on, turn it off, whatever the case may be. So once everything was hooked up there, all the wiring was done for all the valves, all that was connected to the controller, it was time to turn on the water make sure everything is running properly and flush the system out a little bit just make sure everything's cleaned out of the lines and then go to the actual heads these are the MP rotators I've been using these in my above ground system for a long time so I'm very familiar with them I chose them again because I've liked them so much and I also have pressure regulated bases that were put in so all of these are going to be exact same pressure coming out that way I know that everything is going to get the same amount of water it's all going to be mapped out out and it should be a little easier for me to figure out how much water is being put down every time. So it just depended on what size we needed for a specific area. There's some 1000s in some of the small sections. There's 2000s which spray a little farther and mainly those are on my side yard. And then the front has 3000s in it which are for a larger area and that way we could cover all the front with just the 3000s. So with the mapping that I'm doing here basically I'm just taking some of my landmarks that I know aren't really going to change like this edge of this landscaping here, marking out to where the line is for the water. 
and just putting that on a map, taking some photos, taking some video, and making sure that I know where those lines are. Once everything gets kind of filled in, repaired here in the next month or two, you really won't know where those lines are anymore, and so in case I ever need to fix anything, that way I just have a map of where everything's at or close to it, and I don't have to go digging around trying to find stuff. We can't dump huge amounts of soil or probably sand is what I'm going to use this time to level things. Uh, we can't just dump that on there and expect that any grass is going to come back through it when you have that big of an area to cover. So we'll see how much this kind of repairs a little bit, but the ground is not going to just magically flatten itself back out after that. So what I'm going to have to do is come in this fall and fix the leveling kind of like I did on my side yard last year which is going to have to have a lot done there too again and then we will see probably what kind of seeding I need to do but this area right here was one that I'm going to be for sure redoing completely this area back here is just filled with a bunch of crappy grass this area I was not planning to redo but with how much leveling I need to do is probably going to need some seed for sure so my final thoughts here are that I know I have a lot of work ahead of me coming up to kind of get back to the way things were before. If I had to do it again, I would probably wait until things had dried out just a little bit more. The damage would have been a little bit less and I wouldn't have so much work to do coming up in the fall. But. If you have some questions, let me know down in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you next time.